Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, Mothman Centaur Robotech. Thank you so much for joining us. For all of you who are watching and uh, just enjoying your chill little Saturdays, welcome on in. It is so great to have you here on this pre Easter Saturday. How are we all doing today? I hope we're having a good time. I hope things are vibing and they're progressing and moving along. We're making incredible things. I know Saturdays are busy, busy days for indie game devs. <laughs> so there's Wife Quest. Hello, hello. Uh, quick update on the game jam. We have 11 teams having joined now. So we have met our challenge or goal uh, so I'm going to introduce something a little bit, just a little special during the game jam. Very excited. We hit that stretch goal of participation. Thank you, everyone who has signed up. Whew. All right. Uh, I, I think and we're going to we're going to spend some time learning some more Godot today and uh, feasting on jelly beans while watching my favorite streamer. Life doesn't get much better. There you go. I've quest. Um, yeah. So uh we have a lot less like business to talk about today because it's it's like it's not it's it's not a weekday. This is like a bonus stream. We're, we can just like get stuff done today. <laughs> I just started the 20 game challenge. Can you join as a solo dev? Oh, of course. Yeah, you can join solo. You can join with a team, however you'd like. The only restrictions are it has to be uh, built. Uh, everything in the in your submission needs to be built during the duration of this jam. Uh, excluding any sound or audio you get from weloveindies.com through our link. You can find that on the on the page. And, and that's okay if that means you're going to submit a game that's just gray boxes. That's totally fine. That's not going to be a, a giant part of the judging criteria. And uh, and then just, you know, keep things safe for work. Adhere to the theme and, like, you're, you're golden. Those are kind of really the only restrictions. So, you don't have a team? No worries. No worries. I think a lot of the people that are joining are solo. Um, we got a couple, I, I know we have a couple of, like, multiple person teams, 
Um, and I've seen some people uh, asking around and, and forming other teams, but it's not it's not one of the requirements at all. Not at all. Not at all. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 super exhausted. I'm not gonna lie. I got I only got a couple hours of sleep last night taking care of kids. So we're gonna we're gonna now go into the ba brain cr crunching work. Oh boy, that's this is not bode well. If, if my ability to enunciate is anything to to expect for today. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, let me throw the the link back in chat. My hero. Oh. Uh, Hungry Mongry, hello, welcome in, good to see you. Uh, there's the link to the jam once again for all of you who are in here and wanting to check it out again. And in the meantime, we're gonna we're gonna do some more Heartbeast tutorializing. I'm really excited. Uh, we I did spend some time last night uh, on some stuff. Check it out. Check out what we got so far. Look at that. Look at that. We've got we got a little doggy, and he's jumping around. He's jumping around on platforms, and the collisions are perfect. The collisions are exactly the way that they should be. <laughs> Hungry Mongry, you do have a sub? Yeah, someone must have gifted you a gift sub. Congratulations. You're one of the luckies. My goodness. <laughs> okay, um... I got my son with me here today. Let me go grab him real quick. Oh, come here, bucko. All right. So we're going to learn today about resources in Godot. Wish I could thank him. Yeah, yeah. So if you go into Twitch, actually, in the upper right corner, there is a little, like, mailbox icon. And that should tell you who gifted you uh, the sub. Okay. Whew. Let's do this thing. We're going to learn about resources. I hear they're a really big deal. I have no idea what they are. And uh, then after we learn about resources, we are going to build a double jump for our dog. And then maybe even get into our, like, pause functionality uh, of pausing the screen before uh, the player has jumped. So... Van Newell gifted it to you. Very nice. There you go. There you go. Yeah, he's not very uh, present in chat, but he hangs out a good amount. All right. So, without further ado, Mr. Heartbeast, take it away. Sing us the siren song of Godot development. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Gotta, gotta banish the chill hops. And welcome to part three for the... Art there we go. Tutorial series. This series is made possible by the people who support me by purchasing my Godot courses. If you're interested in that, there's a link in the description below or in the comments below. In the last video, we set up our player so that it has a coyote jump, and this gives our. Uh, Which gives we don't need to worry about. Ironically, seeing as how we have a dog that's jumping, we don't need to worry about the coyote jump. Uh, we're going to make a few other minor tweaks, and then I'm going to introduce custom resources to you so we can have some different, we can play with our character's movement options and uh, test a lot of different ones to get a feel for which ones are best. So we'll start off by coming into our character. You know, I didn't even think about that. That's really smart. When you're trying to prototype movement, throw out like 10 different values and settings and then assign them a keyboard shortcut so that when you're in your world, you can just hit one, and now you're playing around with your movement uh, number one, and do all that, and then kind of get a feel for what you like. Oh, that's really smart. That's very smart. And then over here on the snap length, I noticed that when the character goes up this 45 here, and then leaves the 45 quickly, if they're moving quickly, they actually enter the air for just like a single frame or two um, because their speed going up the hill is fast enough that when they reach the top, they kind of launch off the top. And I don't want that. So we're going to set the snap length to three pixels. Not and really something we need to worry about This will keep the on rescue snap to the ground 
even when they're going fast. And there, it looks like it is doing it now. I, the way I could tell before is because I could see the jump frame of the player for a split second at the top of that ledge. Okay. Now, another thing that, uh, so let's get into, let's get into custom resources. Let's so do it. We have our player set up with these constants right here. And um, we, could, we could make these export variables. So we'll introduce export variables as well. So I could do export, export variables var. And so instead of doing these as constants, I could make them all export variables like this. Uh, and what that does is when we come into our player here, we can see these properties in the editor, which is really nice. It allows us to tweak these values. Oh, uh, what? But what if That's great. That's so cool. I love that. That's a big deal. Jeez. I, I, yes, yes, good. That's great. If there's a value that we like, but we want to try some other values, but we don't want to have to try and remember it. And this is where custom resources can come in. Now, we've already been... All right, let's, let's definitely do this. Holy cow. Let's go to our script. Jeez. Um, I'm I'm finally piecing together how to like navigate these different tabs, these three layers of navigation. It's very confusing. I'm not gonna lie. I hate that I have this world tab like activated, but what I'm seeing in here doesn't really have anything to do with world. It's just, uh, okay, okay, guy, okay. Um, so instead of being const, it's at export var yeah yeah okay save oh and there they are that is so cool <laughs> holy cow that's really rad cubus hello welcome in good to see ya good to see ya been using resources if you look down here um this player.png if we double click on it this is actually a resource instead of godot uh it inherits from resource See right here, it has some properties that come from being a resource. So Godot has nodes and it has scenes, but it also has resources. Let's create a new, uh, a new script. Yeah, and I, that, that's something I really need to figure out. What exactly constitutes a node, a resource, or a, uh, shoot, what's the third one? Uh, it's not script, it's a uh, scene, a scene. What exactly is a scene? What exactly is a node? How are they different? Um, I guess I guess a node is just like a set of attributes that you slap onto it, a set of prefabbed attributes. And a scene is a collection of nodes. And then a resource is a reusable chunk of content. Uh, that you can throw around. Amanusis, hello, welcome in. How you doing, friend? I saw your post on your Discord about uh, if anyone wants any Godot tutorials, and I said, I thought in my heart, yes, I want all the Godot tor tutorials, please. Do, do all of them. Teach me how to build games, Amanusis. <laughs> and we're going to call this player movement uh data and this script will inherit from resource instead of node and that's because we're not going to attach it to a node it's going to be just a resource in the editor okay so let's let's catch up here new script uh new script there we go oh guy okay how's that so that can be more comfy. Inherits from resource. And the name is going to be, what do we call it? Player movement data. Oh, come on. Player movement data. Okay. Can create it. 
I mean, it's this. I always struggle to know what people want tutorials on because all the stuff I'm interested in is very complicated and of little practical use. Well, why are you interested in it, though? Like, I think that would be a good place to start. And if you are interested in it, maybe other people would be interested in it. And then the more you can frame why it's interesting in a broadly applicable way, then that means more people would be interested in it. See where we're going? See where we're going? Right. Uh, Hat Tower, Nemphis Macaroon. Hello. Welcome in. Um, your wish is my command. We, we we're, on, we're doing a Saturday stream. So we got special hats. We got special party hats today. We have my daughter's uh beanie we have my daughter's big sister crown yeah this is fine good yep we'll do the baseball well all right i'm going to i'm going to short change you a little bit on the hats because this next one is kind of like two hats Bum ba ba 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 bum 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 ba ba bum ba 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 take off the nerd glasses. Ba da 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 da. I don't know. Oh gosh, it's gotten so small over time. Oh, it's shrunk. Oh, there we go. And then we can, uh, and then we can do do like one of these, and then we can do, um, up up on the spike, up up on the up on the up on the spike, hat just right on up there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, whoo! This is actually incredibly painful, uh, because each of these spikes has a big spike also coming in. This guy in New Zealand! Oh. Okay. Um. I have my own built-in hat rack on this. There we go. This is fine. No, it's not fine. It's it's not fine. There we go. Memphis. Okay. All right. Okay. Um. Uh. Oh no. Oh no. I I, I can't even. Oh gosh. They add so much weight. Ugh. Okay. Okay. Now I am dressed in the carcasses of many hat victims. Okay. All right. This is fine. I can see, I can not move, and everything is fine. Uh, I think. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, little one. Okay, all right. I will not poke you with the Witch King of Angmar's hat. Okay. Okay. There we go. We found we found equilibrium. We have achieved homeostasis. Everything is fine. Okay. The remains of your beheaded enemies. <laughs> oh, hungry. Uh, uh, uh. If you were to wear that outside in front of non-nerds, you might get some looks. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. Everything's fine. 
don't worry about me. Really glad everyone wiped out their points to start the game jam, so no one has enough to to do uh the clear the hats. That's great. This is good. I'm glad I'm committed to a two hour stream with this. Let's let's keep learning. Go go to. Now our player has a speed and acceleration, a friction, a jump velocity, right? So we're gonna copy these. Just copy. <laughs> okay. Okay. I have transcended. I am now a hat golem. Your petty mortal concerns mean nothing to me. I am made up of 99% hats and 1% swag. Behold my fury. Did you know that you get 400 Oh, okay, hello. Ah, uh, oh, thank you, my savior. Ah. Uh. I thought I could trust you all. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, never again. Never again. None of you get channel points. You're all banned. <laughs> Except for Kehadao. Kehadao is just fine. You you told me to add a hat, but then you got them all off. That's fine. <laughs> Happy Easter, dude. Hope the fam's good. Likewise, this guy in New Zealand. Happy Easter. Thank you so much. We're all doing great. Glad we got some time to stream here in between uh, some Easter celebrations. Got to head out. Family day for me. I hear you. Have a great family day, my friend. Got a hat out. That's right. See you later. Have a great one. Oh, my goodness. I did not see uh, pretty much anything of chat for the past several minutes. So, uh, sorry. You brought this upon yourselves. Uh <laughs> also got a gravity. So, let's. Um... Well, we won't copy gravity. So, we're going to copy these. We'll come down into our player movement data. And up at the top here, uh, we're going to give it a class name. Okay, hold on. I need to re rewatch all this. <laughs> well, we won't copy gravity. So we're going to copy these. And we'll come down into our player movement data. And up at the top here, uh, we're going to give it a class name. We'll name it player movement data. And I'll tell you what that class is. Class does Bane. <laughs> now we can paste these export variables. And we'll make them uh, not capital. So this jump velocity. OK. So now we've created this script that inherits from resource, and we've given it this class name, and it has these variables. So a resource uh, can have different functions, and it can have different variables. So it ha can have a bunch of different logic. However, it won't have the same things that Node or Node2D have. So Node is going to have stuff like, uh, if you look at its property, it's going to have enter tree, exit tree, going to have get tree, get node. All of these functions, they're not going to exist on resource because it's not a node. Resource um, actually comes from object. So objects, OK. Resource. Can't find it here. But if you, if you look in here, you can see we have resource. And it has its own functions that it will have. Oh, okay. A few different functions. And so resource is just another data type then. This is saying it's not a node, it's a resource. And that only means um, the pre-built things that are available to it and kind of what it is allowed to hook into or not. Okay, got it. Signals that it, can, that it has. So in order to create a resource, we can right click over here in the file system and we can do new resource. And there's going to be a whole bunch of different built-in resources that Godot has. Uh, there's, there's a ton of them. But 
since we gave our player movement data script a class name, we can search for that now. So player oh. data, and we can see this now inside of this list because of that class name up here. We can double click on it. Hold on, that's not working for me. Yeah, it's not showing up for me. Um, yeah, this, is, this freaks me out every time. I think I'm in world. Okay. Player movement data dot GD. This should work just fine. New resource. Player. Huh. Movement data. Hmm. We have resource. But that's not what we're looking for. Let's see. Is is there something going on with class name or something? Extends resource. But yeah, he his is getting a different text highlight, and and our mine isn't. Let's see. Class no. No one else is having problems with that. Weird. That's very strange. This is a, the, the bummer part of a tutorial is when it's like, we've done literally nothing yet, pretty much. Uh, there's been one step. There's not a lot of opportunities for failure at this point. What has broken? Sometimes the language server has trouble with the class name. Try changing and saving the script. Interesting. That's, that's, that's good to know. Ah, there we go. Okay. Thank you, Amanusis. I appreciate that. This list. That's good to be aware of. Class name up here. We can double click on it. And we'll call this default movement data. Okay, so now we have this default movement data. And you can see that it has those same inspector properties over here. So we can adjust the, this information okay. on this Very cool. resource. Let's come into our player. I help you do yeah, help, Amanusis. You help these, tremendously what much. Do instead, is export our resource. So, we'll do at export var movement underscore data, and we'll set this. Uh, and we'll do as as that's new. Movement. No, as player movement data. Can we do that? No, we do it. We do the typing like this. We just type it like this. Okay. So export var movement data. And then we tell Godot that it's um, of type movement data. Okay. And that's important. Now, all of this code down here is broken because it's like, where are these variables? I don't know where they are. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Okay. We come to our player here. Oh, we got ads. We'll be right back.
Let's get back into it. Oh, actually, we might not be able to get to it in a second. Yeah, because Godot is not updating the problem. Oh, by the way, Eminusa said, um, as is a keyword for type checking or casting to a specific type, which is interesting because I thought this was loosely typed, a loosely typed language. But I guess sometimes you want to specify what the type is. I uh, got to head out and get some food. If you get stuck on anything, you can ping me on Discord. Thank you so much, Eminusa. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, because the script has errors in it. So now what we're going to do is instead of saying jump velocity, we'll say movement data dot jump velocity like this. And we'll replace that anywhere that we had jump velocity. Mm. Sure. And then instead of acceleration, we'll do movement data dot acceleration instead of Friction, we'll do movement data dot friction. And instead of speed, we'll do movement data dot speed. Did we fix it? Yes, we did. Okay. Now up here on our player, you can see- All right, hold on. You're a little bit faster than I am. And uh, movement data dot friction. Okay, we good? No, because I had a typo. Movement. <laughs> there we go. We have movement data as a variable and we can grab our default movement data. We can drop it right here. And we can even add. Uh, what was that? Movement data, we can drop it right here. I do not have that. Is it? Mm. How's the platformer going? Jack, it's going all right. I got, oh, you know what? Is this gonna, yeah, no, it's it's all broken because we're, we're redoing all the data, but I got everything working where uh, you can see on the Discord. Uh, I posted it up last night where the dog is jumping and colliding with platforms and it all works perfectly. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it's been pretty great. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's been really nice. <laughs> Click on your player node. Well, I mean, what this, this, this thing is really confusing. This is one thing I really don't like about, uh, googity doogity, um, is this like triple navigation layer, especially since this tab says like, look, everything in here belongs to this tab, but that's not true. They're independent of, to a large degree. I don't know, it's weird. Told you Godot was good. <laughs> well, you weren't wrong, my friend. That is for sure. Yeah, what's weird is like, I've got this player node. Do I need to rename it here? And then it's just weird that this is not the same name. Make sure you save your code. Yeah, yeah, that is one thing I'm noticing is that like you have to save things in multiple spaces, which is kind of annoying. I did like that about Game Maker. One control S saves the entire project. Kind of weird, it gets a bit annoying when you have more than one script per like a save node. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, some some information architecture would, would be helpful there, right? Get a UX designer in there and, and have them figure that out. <laughs> um, so we have resource here, but that's not the same thing really.
Yeah, he just has his base player node selected, right? Yeah. So... Why is this different than mine? You need to add the script to the player. Is the script not added? Oh, okay. Weird. I did skip a tutorial that was about um, coyote jumping, and it could be that he worked in something a little bit different in there. Okay, so we can grab our default movement data and just slap that on in, okay? I don't really know what that's doing. And we can even edit this movement data still, here, the properties of it over here. So just remember that if you edit the data here, it will edit it on here as well, which, uh, which is what we want. Yeah. Now when we play the game, it. Okay, so we broke it somehow. <laughs> 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 oh, it's because I spelled friction. Friction. Okay. In fact, real quick, uh, I'm gonna make this maximized so that you can see the changes up here at the top. We have this, and then down here we have our changes to wherever it has movement data. You should be able to see it all at once now. Okay, now we'll run. And all right, let's check this out. There we go, see, look, it works. We have a dog that's jumping around and colliding exactly the way that he should. It's beautiful, it's so good. <laughs> And our character plays exactly the same we did before, right? Just now we've Master decentralized. Uh, powerful... We've decentralized the player data and everything, so it's a lot easier to tamper with. Ariel, howdy, howdy! Welcome on in. Good to see you on over there on YouTube. How you doing? We like this default movement data, but let's say we want to create a different character movement data. So we can right click <gasps> over here. Oh, so this is a way you can like mock out a bunch of different. Oh, this is cool. I think I see where this is going. Oh, little Kai. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? All right, let's get that mute button in there. Let's get that pacifier going. All right. There we go. Okay. Goodness gracious. We can do new. We can do resource. We have our default player movement data, but let's create a new resource and we'll call this one, uh, we'll call this one faster player movement, faster movement data. Yes. We come into this new nice. resource and we can make some changes. Say, well, we want this character to accelerate faster at a thousand we want to give them a faster movement speed of 120 and uh we'll leave their friction the same we'll make them jump ariel finally finally got good weather so went outside for once also did a brain numbing test with a hundred questions congratulations you've been successfully numbed they can perform the uh what what's it called the uh darn it um Lobotomy now. Now that you're anesthetized, they could go get that all squared away. I have also had a lobotomy, but mine has been non-surgical. It's been all natural through, uh, through children. Um, I also have been paid to do more assignments. Let's say my schedule is bloody full. Oh, well, goodness. I mean, it's, I'm glad you're making some income, though. That's good. Up a little higher, too. I'm, I'm curious what you mean by paid to do more assignments. Uh, like, do they... Is someone paying you to uh, contracting you out to do some stuff for them uh minus 350 all right like this okay now this is our previous character movement right but we can come into our player and we can drag our faster movement data and drop it in here now we can test this and our character moves faster and can jump higher than before now we could create a third one, just to really show the difference here. We'll create a third one, we'll call this slow movement data. 
and we'll make the speed 50. Make our My group mates pay me to do some specific assignments for specific. <laughs> oh boy. I, I don't know if this is a cultural thing, but that's weird over here. <laughs> Acceleration 600. That would, that would get you kicked out of university over here. <laughs> 800 and our jump velocity minus. All right, hold on. I want to play with these different things here. So we've got our normal. And then, if I'm understanding things correct, we can just. Oops. Oh dear. Bring that back out. There we go. So we should probably make like a new folder, right? Of uh, resources. Uh, the files are sorted by name, so you can't really move them around, which gets somewhat annoying. But it makes you actually want to sort your stuff into folders sooner, so I consider it a plus. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's absolutely illegal here, too, but in my uni, no one cares. Wow. Your university sounds like a wild place, Ariel. I'm not going to lie. It sounds like the sort of place that when you leave that school, you're going to have some stories. All right, so this is fast. Whoa! <laughs> so this is the fast movement. <laughs> so that's fast. Let's check out slow. <laughs> He's like a little bunny. <laughs> jump, 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 jump. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh as much as it does. That's great. Okay. Uh, if someone accuses me of doing work for others, I specifically format the assignments in the style of other students. Wow. Goodness gracious. That's, uh, intense. For, for, for all the minors, uh, watching, uh, this, we, we can't con uh, condone that. <laughs> so someone asks, I say, no, officer, I never did it. Besides, that's how I format my assignments, which is entirely different than what the other student does. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, probably the less I know about this, the better, Ariel. <laughs> this is cool. I love this concept of resources. I wish. Swap it out. I, I hope there's a way that you can bind resources to different movement to, to different key bindings. Like if I can press one and swap in the fast movement and two to do the slow movement, that would be rad. And now our character moves much more slowly with this different resource. And these resources could be swapped out during runtime. And they can? Do that in a later video. Yes! That's uh, perfect! You could also use them for different characters. You could make stuff. it like that. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't want it necessarily for gameplay reasons, but I want it to be able to, like, quickly prototype out 10 different movement styles and then just see which one feels good. Walk around in a playground and not have to, like, leave the editor, swap out a script, load it up again. It would be great to just dynamically change it and I can evaluate, it, it, it minimizes the gap between different experiences so the brain can actually process it better. That, that's the whole point behind that. Multiple characters on the screen, you could give them each different movement data based on these different stats. That's super cool, I love okay. this. This is great. The last thing I wanna do, well, I don't know if this is the last thing, but another thing I wanna do is I wanna add uh, Add input actions, then in the process, just to check which one is being pressed, and then just swap out the file. Uh, interesting. So you'd have, like, different, like, the arrow keys would be fast, WASD would be slow, and then, like, I don't know, QWOP would be, <laughs> you know, normal. A gravity scaler. Let's come in here, and we'll do export our okay. gravity. Uh, so we are in player movement data over here. So we're adding in at export. Uh, scale. We'll set this equal to 1.0 by default. Now, if we come over into our player and inside of our player script here, we have our gravity. So when we're applying the gravity, we also want to multiply by movement data dot gravity scale. And this will allow us to adjust the scale of gravity. So let's come into our slower move, moving character and let's set our gravity scale to 
Now we may need to compensate by setting the jump velocity because that's a significant change in our gravity scale. But with the slower movement, now we can still jump high and we fall slower as well. Okay. Interesting. I want to try that out. Hold on. I want to check that out. Uh, gravity scale. So we can set that to like 0.5. Uh, oh, can it only be whole numbers? Huh. Why is my gravity scale different than his gravity scale? Did I do something different? Uh, Ariel thing is, these are not the courses that one would call useful, plus half the group is working already, so I don't blame them to ask someone to do some. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Jack, oh, yeah, you could have it like that. I was more thinking you just have WAS, then press, like, one switch. Yeah, that's what I want. I want to press one to go to the normal, two to slow, three to fat. Yes. Yes. Change the variable type to float. Uh, Did he do that? No, he didn't. You, ha you have it as int, probably. I mean, I have it as... Oh, and that's why he does the 1.0, because it's loosely typed. And if you just do one, it'll assume integer. Okay, all right. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. So for slow movement, we're going to change this to... Z there we go. Yeah. And then fast movement. Uh, We'll drive it up a little bit. And let's go to our player... And let's throw in fast. Oops, I need to I need to build in a keyboard shortcut to restart the room. All right. I want to I want to play around with this a little bit and kind of get a feel for how these numbers interact with each other. Uh, there we go. Boop 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 boop. Let's try one point seven five. Yeah, okay, that's feeling good. I mean, not really, but <laughs> variable gravity equals float colon 0.5. Oh, interesting, Robotech. I guess for more rigorous code, you can also define your variable types to make sure the variable type is correct. I mean, that's I mean, that's what I was raised on. You know, I'm 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 a curmudgeon. I was raised on the old C C plus plus days. All this loosely typed garbage is just a uh, hippy dippy nonsense to me. <laughs> I think all of these uh, loosely typed languages should should go get a haircut, you know? <laughs> That's a funny joke because I used to have hair down to my shoulders. Okay. Uh, that... Let's inc uh, throw our jump velocity up a little bit. Take it to 200. And then what happens if we change our gravity scale? Are we going to float now? Yep. <laughs> there we go. So if we set it to one, what does this feel like? Okay, and then take it down to half. Once again, just wanted to kind of get a feel for how these numbers interact with each other. Yeah, much more floaty. Okay. Okay, cool. Very cool. This is great. I love this. Dynamic typing is not great, says Kehado. Robotech, C++ is where I started. Very nice. Yeah, memory pointers. Memory pointers all day. All day long. <laughs> one, of, one of my first major projects was uh, my cousin and I. My cousin and I are, are two months apart uh, in, in age. And uh, my brother was teaching us programming. And he was teaching us C++. And we built Minesweeper. Minesweeper? Battleship. It was Battleship. We built Battleship uh, using ASCII characters. And it was awesome. It was super, super cool. And that was like my foundational experience with programming. Uh, I started with Python, but that's because I'm a me mechanical engineering student. Oh, okay, interesting. Mechanical engineering. They, they use a lot of Python there, huh? Now, if we come over into our player. Yeah, I... <laughs> I remember my brother trying to teach me about computers. I think my parents were paying him to teach me things. And he was like, he laid out, oh, you're just having a hard time right now, huh? He laid out all the parts of a computer on on a big uh, blanket. Said, all right, Joe, what is this piece? And I'm like, I don't know what, 
Buster Stare. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Welcome in. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, feel free to tell us if you're working on anything or just feel free to hang out. It's, we're just happy you're here. And he was telling me, like, Joe, I know you know what this is. What is this thing? And I'm like, I've never, I've never learned any of this. I don't know what it is. Because he lived a different life than I did. He he loved tearing things apart and figuring out how they worked and what they were. And I've just, I've never cared about any of that. <laughs> so we sat for like 30 minutes with a hard drive in my hand. He was like, Joe, you know what this is. I'm like, I don't, I, don't, I have no reference to understand what this thing is. And I was scanning over all the stickers and being like, there's got to be a clue on here. If I could just decipher the runes on this tablet that I'll be able to make my brother happy. <laughs> oh, it was good times. And inside of our player script here, we have our gravity. So when we're applying the gravity, we also want to multiply by movement data dot gravity scale. Okay, which we've got. And this will allow us to adjust the scale of gravity. So let's come in five. Now gravity scale. But with the slower movement, now we can still jump high and we fall slower as well. Okay. Interesting thing, you can actually swap these out in real time. So if I come down here and I click on my player over here and I swap, well, we might have to click on the remote tab. The remote tab shows the scene as it's running in your game. Let me click on the player. Oh, whoa, hold on. What? Whoa, really? Oh, that's very cool. I don't totally understand that, but it feels like it's really cool. Is that where I can like monitor variables and stuff? Cause that would be, that would be really good. That would be a really good thing to have. Then we could come in and we could swap for this faster movement data. Oh, and you could just it. do that oh. while the game is running. So, okay. Uh, Interesting. That's not going to work, apparently. Or not. <laughs> we can't swap it out in real time. Okay. Or I did it wrong. Never I mind. Know. I mean, we can't swap it out in real time in the editor. We can in play. So let's 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 do it. Good noches. Uh, wait, sorry. No, hold on. Order is important. If, if playing Slay the Spire has taught me anything, it's that order is crucial. Uh, Jack codes, it's for like runtime objects. So you can see objects that might spawn in mid running and see variables of those objects. That's very cool. That's going to come in very, very handy when we're spawning in platforms and enemies and all that. I want to make sure it's all tidy. That's great. When did I play this? Wait, no, order. 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 Good noches. I started with Q Basic. Wow, but I didn't think it was programming language. I was in seventh grade. I did Java in school, but it was so bland because in school it was just about making simple programs. Yeah, I, I hear that. Finally took the matter in my own, my own hand in high school and learned Python and made a GUI-based application. That's when I realized programming is much more. That's awesome. Good notes. Yeah, I hear you on the bland thing. Um, I've, 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 you know, like my brother taught me some C++. I, I took some programming classes in college. I thought I wanted to be a game programmer and realized, oh, I, I don't really want to program. And... Every time it would all die, my interest would die because I just was doing stuff I didn't care about. You know, everyone says like, oh, for your first project, build a to-do list or build a, a calculator. And I'm like, that sounds like hell. I, I'm not going to build anything if that's what I have to start off building. So, yeah, definitely finding the things that like activate your brain for sure. Uh, when did you play Slay the Spire? Uh, you know, actually not as much as uh, as I should. I watched a ton of Dolphin Chemist play Slay the Spire for years. And then I think I played maybe 20, 30 hours, and I put in a, a lot of hours into the the mod, um, which was great. And maybe we'll, we'll throw that on someday to talk about, like, the difference between the official design and mechanics and everything and the downfall uh, mod uh, updates and everything and how those mechanics differ and how they played with things. I think that'd be an interesting compare and contrast. Um, Learning Java is very basic at the start, but the moment you realize you can instantiate your defined objects is a mind-blowing moment. I start with Robos, the Arduino world. Nice, Robotech. I mean, that's very fitting, given your name. I, 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 that doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> In code. Inside of the physics process, we'll say if 
input dot is action just press do I accept movement data equals load faster movement data. oh cool okay okay so this is how we're how we swap things out in runtime okay let's do this I'm, I really want to set this up so oh, this is oh guy uh, I do think it's important for people to learn the basics, though. Nowadays, a lot of people are obsessed with learning frameworks like React and Svelte without first learning your basic data structures and algorithms. I mean, I think that's fair. I think there's a lot to be said for, um, you know, getting the, the foundational aspects correct. It's a trope in, like, martial arts movies, right? That the main character wins because their sensei forced them to drill the basics while... The hot-headed, mean antagonist was off learning all the cool advanced techniques, right? My dad wants me to learn Rust now. Oh, wow. I, I, I admit, I don't totally know what Rust is. I know it's... I, I, I didn't start hearing about it until, like, a couple months ago. And I don't know if that's just because I started walking in different circles, which I definitely did, or 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 what, but... Um, yeah, I mean, K. Hado, I'm definitely a part of that, uh, of the people lacking certain fundamentals. And it's made me think about paying for some sort of programming official, uh, formal education where that is packaged up and presented. Uh, hold on, I got you good, no chase. Um, pretty sure it's quite new. Okay. The game or the language or or the chemical substance. Pretty sure the chemical substance is, is, is pretty old. Uh, skip the basics. If you just do it without knowing the underlying things, AI is going to blow you hard. <laughs> it's supposed to be like this new language that's faster and safer to use and can run for longer, more efficiently. Okay, cool. I Like, I've heard it's really popular in, like, banking software and stuff, which surprises me because since when did banks get, like, quick at adopting new technologies? <laughs> um, okay. What are we doing? We're 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 dynamically changing resources. So if input dot uh is action just pressed, I'm gonna have to, it's that's gonna take me a while to remember. By the way, we do have ads starting up in just a second. Well, well, there we go. There are the ads. We'll be right back.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, uh, create new actions. Yes, Jack, I I, I, I was pretty sure we were going to be doing that. Uh, we'll be getting to that in just a sec. Uh, Rust is cool. Attracts your memory use with language semantics, so you don't need to deallocate and don't need garbage collection. Yeah, I have just enough experience with C++ to kind of know that that's a really cool thing. <laughs> Uh, kiddo, compilation types are pretty slow, though. To me, that, you know, as long as it's on somebody else's dime, that just sounds like more time to, like, do nerf fights or, or, or play a game or something, you know? <laughs> that old classic XKCD comic of the two programmers sword fighting. Uh, there's also Carbon, spiritual successor to C++, but most people don't use it. It's not just about the new languages are better. There are other factors, too. It's true, and... Uh, you know, people have to learn new languages. That takes time. Time is money. And not only is it money in terms of, like, training people, it's also opportunity cost. It's like we could, we could have a whole team learn this new language and take a year to get really, really, really proficient in it. In the meantime, the competition is still building things in C++, and they have outpaced us, and now our company is dying. <laughs> So it's tough. You always got to make those decisions. Okay. Uh, Godot. Oh, little one. So we are going to go to our project settings and go to our input map. Now I want... Do we have, like, numbers? Because that would be nice if we just could have that. Little little guy is having a tough time. He's just full of all sorts of gas and just has no idea how to release it. All right. Um, I'm having such a great Saturday. This is awesome. Thank you all for being here. I love doing streams like this. Okay. So I'm not seeing anything. So let's um, make a new one. I'm assuming this is adding a key to that action. I want to make a new action. Add a new action. Okay. So this is... Uh, I don't know. Does it have to start with UI? Because it's, it's not going to be a part of the UI. Can it be like debug? That would be nice. Add. Is that going to work? Hey, debug one. And then we're going to go to keyboard keys, and we're just going to do one. Okay. And then can I copy this action? Because I just, I just want to do this for like one through five. Uh, <laughs> all right. Looks like there's not a, a quick and easy way. So we'll turn off the built-in one, so I only see mine. Debug, underscore, copy, two, oh, three, four, and five. And then we can just go in here, two, done. I mean, this, uh, I, I do wish there was a way to do this a little bit more in bulk, but, like, this isn't terrible once you kind of get the flow. The, the search makes this much more reasonable. Five. Okay, so there we go. We've got all those different debug uh, sections. So we could do debug underscore one, but I think it has to be in quotes, right? Oh, you're going to do the opening and closing for me, huh? Debug one. Okay. And then we've got uh, movement data. Movement data, which is just this thing that we're referencing down here. And we have exported here. Export var movement data. As, right? That's what the colon means I've learned today. Player movement data, which is um, this that we've built down here, which has the variables. And then these are different configurations. These resources are different configurations of the variables. Oh, this is, this is getting a little messy here. Okay. There we go. So movement data equals load uh, and then can I do a search for like default? Uh, <laughs> oh, very nice. Okay. And then we're going to cut, uh, well, hold on. 
Expected a colon. Okay. There we go. So we can copy this. Paste. Paste. And we'll just do three for now. We have the, the action set up for more. But we'll just do this. Fast and slow. Okay, cool. Colons! Don't you just love it when a guy walks past you and you smell his colon? Man, it's so great. Hey, there we go! Uh, invalid get index gravity scale on base null instance. Interesting. That's weird. Cannot open file fast movement data. Oh, it's because it's not fast. It's faster. It. That's interesting because I thought I just auto completed that. There we go. Uh, okay, so we've got the same thing over here. It's not slow, it's slower. Okay, cool. All right. This is great, by the way. And I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't do this on Game Maker, or at least something similar to it. You'd probably just be changing the variables. Or, um... How would you do this in Game Maker? Yeah, you just have to be, like, changing global variables. I don't think you can, like, swap... I guess you could set a variable... Uh, for like your movement script and say have three different like velocity definition scripts and then you swap out which velocity script is assigned to that variable on button press that's probably how you do it the most annoying thing uh this is that if you change the physical location it doesn't change the file path in code yeah that is a problem that is one thing game maker does do to its credit like if you change a sprite name it changes it everywhere so you don't break all your references. Musty not capping. Hey, good to see ya. How you doing? We're learning Godot in preparation for our game jam on Monday. Welcome in. Good to see ya. Let's see, musty not capping. Do I have anything in my spreadsheet for what you're building? No. Okay. If you're building something, feel free to let me know. I want to hear about it. All right. Let's keep going. This is super cool, by the way. I love this. Like this. This is really great. <laughs> Um, I'm just gonna add in a, a quick um, swap out physics or, or, or player movement uh, sets. This is great. I love this. This is really cool. <laughs> I'd be a bit worried if I could smell a man's colon. I'd call an ambulance. It's an old uh, great Twitter trend. Um, way back in the day, someone found all these posts of these. Whoa. Post of these teenage girls uh, misspelling cologne, and it's just the funniest freaking thing ever. Um, I can't really do anything for a month because I'm babysitting for a couple weeks. Hey, me too. M mine's a little more long term, but uh, that's great. You're getting paid. That's great. Bone apple tea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, man. I, I just, I. I, it's so hard for me to even express how how much of a relief that is. That's gonna speed uh, like polish up in my projects so much. And that the cool thing is this is just a technique. Like I could have been doing this in Game Maker if I was thinking ahead enough. So this is probably gonna apply in different avenues in any engine that I build stuff in. So all of a sudden, my polish and feel phases are way better. Oh, guy, what's going on? You never cry this much without, like, any way for me to help. You okay? Are you feeling sick or something? What's going on? All right. Um, I don't need to hit play again. Let's, let's, okay, let's keep going. So now, if we run the game, we're using the arrow keys. We're moving around really slowly. It's probably a little the second we press quiet the space for you guys. Bar, we get the faster movement data, right? It swaps to the new, the new type. So it could be a power-up, too. Yeah, that's kind uh, of there's interesting. There's a lot of different applications for something like this. I think the I mean, that's interesting. Having different gravity based on jump than if you're, like, falling off a cliff. That would be really interesting. By the way, 
uh, for everyone. We did give a sneak peek on the Game Jam theme to our Discord members. It is on our Discord. You can go check out what the theme is right now. Shh, don't, don't say it on stream. Uh, and uh, people can start ideating and get getting thoughts going. We can't build anything yet, but you can start thinking about it. So uh, if you want to get a little sneak peek into what is going on for our Game Jam, uh, be sure to go join the Discord. Hey, 12, look at that. Very, very cool. Okay. I think the... Hey, y'all, and welcome no to my garage. Ads. And new product. No ads. No. Be gone. Interesting application is testing different movement on your character really quickly and then saving that movement um, until you find something that you like. You can kind of, uh, you, could, you could split test it, try two different kinds, see which one people like more, and then do it again until you come, come up with a movement that feels really I got some ideas going, but I have no idea how to actually code it. I only code stupid stuff, so I have no idea how I'm going to make stuff actually work. I don't know, Jack. You've helped me out of quite a lot of binds. I think you'll figure it out. Really good. I've got confidence in you. Okay, so we set our gravity scale. The other thing I want to do is come into the movement data, and I want to say so we have our friction, but we should really only apply friction where on the, on the ground. So let's export a new variable called air resistance. And we'll set this equal to 200 as a default. Now when we come into our player, we're applying friction, right? That makes sense. We should do it when we're only when we're on the ground, right? Um, so if we come into apply friction, we should say if input axis is equal to zero and is on floor. I already did this. I, I'm, I'm seven parallel dimensions ahead of you, heart beast. Give me your job, please. I'll take all your YouTube subscribers. Thank you. <laughs> now our character will only There can be only one. When they're on the ground. <laughs> but they also have no air resistance, which if we switch to our faster movement, um, can be a little bit hard to control. It's not too bad, I guess. Um, but it can feel a little bit weird to control your jumps because there's no resistance slowing your character down in the air. So we're going to create a new function that's very similar to our apply friction. But we'll, uh, we'll call it apply air resistance. OK. I, I have wondered about doing stuff like this in the past. So I'm glad he's talking about this. I've, I've had it kick around in my head, but no real way to kind of meaningfully process it and think about it. So this is good. Um, apply air resistance. And I assume we're going to be passing in delta as well. All right. Valonir, hey, welcome in, friend. Good to see you. How are you? How, how are your projects going? Valonir, I have a spreadsheet. Filled with uh, all the projects that the community members are working on, and I don't have anything in here. And I'm getting very embarrassed because I cannot remember your stream because I have like three hours, four hours of sleep racked up last night because of the plague of children. Um, would you mind telling me real quick what what your project is again? I I, I deeply apologize. <laughs> I this is why I write things down is because I really care but I'm really bad at remembering. Turn-based RPG played through Twitch chat. That's right. Thank you. Does it have a name? And and what language uh, what engine is it in? If you, if if you don't mind me asking. By the way, Valerie is a great streamer. Uh, for those of you who um don't know about Valenir, he's a much better streamer than I am. <laughs> Valonir Fantasy and in Godot. Thank you, Valonir. I appreciate that. Hey, full box. Yeah, the beer is almost back. It's coming. It's coming. ADHD, ADHD brain right there. I empathize. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, man. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> an A? I think it's an A. Input access. Spelling isn't my strong suit. Uh, we're, we, we don't need to worry about input access. Um, I, I deleted yeah. that entirely input from my code because we're only ever moving in one direction for this game. And um, 
if not, not is, is on floor. floor. Look for a new here. Then velocity dot x equals move toward velocity dot x. So where we start at zero movement and data dot air resistance. I spelled it with an E in, in the player movement data. We gotta fix that. Air resistance. I'm pretty sure it's an A. It's gonna be embarrassing if it was an if it was an E all along. From Air float to float and delta times float. Delta. Now our character times delta. Oh, okay. And this is something I, I I still don't quite conceptualize exactly how this function works. Like why we're multiplying by delta here? Why we're multiplying acceleration by delta? I guess right because it's delta is one sixtieth, so we're shrinking that acceleration down. But why are we shrinking it down? Why are we not just setting acceleration to be, a, or the air resistance to be a lower number in the first place? Why are we multiplying it by delta? Is that so that it maintains good um, ticks with the physics engine? But we're also calling this within physics process, right? So wouldn't that automatically kind of handle that for us? Apply air resistance. Uh, I'm assuming we need to pass a delta. Yeah. Okay. So you can have reasonable size numbers so you can math it out. Also change number of frames a second. But, but wouldn't the frames thing be handled by physics process? Wouldn't that just automatically do that? Uh, frames are not always equals. Okay. Frames aren't always equal, just as full... Okay, so when you say frames are not, by the way, thank you. I appreciate it. This is not me like just being uh, mad, don't backseat me. This is like me searching for input. Um, when you say frames are not equals, does that mean frame A and frame B may have different time durations or that like your physics frames may be different than your FPS frames, like your rendering frames? Frame duration isn't always consistent. Okay, okay. So, so they could be of different time durations. Okay, okay. So, so we pass in delta because otherwise it may feel wonky because each frame may be a slightly different time duration, resulting in possibly more or fewer cycles of running that script. So we, we multiply by delta to kind of normalize it. Is that right? Am I getting... That kind of, that doesn't feel quite right. It feels like we're getting closer, but not quite there. Um, you might get 60 frames per second, but the first frame takes two times longer than the second frame. Okay. Frames should be equal or you'll have an unstable physics sim. Well, supposedly, unless we're like normalizing it, right? Delta is time since last from, not 1 60th. Uh, time since last frame, not 1 60th. Uh, sure, but, uh, right. In our settings, it's set to 60. Um, which is why, why I went with that. But but yeah, that, that's the technical definition, right? Um, time since last frame. Okay. I don't know about Godot, but Unity has a fixed time step per frame by default. So does Game Maker. Um, I, it sounds like Godot is a little bit more granular than that, though. Yeah, sorry, just using the number you were playing with. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. It's much easier to reason about your numbers in reference to seconds than frames. Uh, I guess so, yeah. Which is probably why, like, most... Like, I don't know when I would not want my physics frames to be set to 60, right? Because then it just ties in naturally to uh, what you're kind of looking for per second. Usually does, but if you're pushing the computer limits, you might get less. Uh, sure. You can skip frames if you use too much process during a frame, so the delta would get bigger to compensate. Ah, okay. So, so if you're normally running at 60, but then you stand on top of the building and you get a massive draw distance and your frames drop down to 30. If we were not calling it by delta and normalizing it, then it would um, be... Uh, it would be half as, it would be running half as many times as it should. And so that would result in some, some funkiness. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. 
The best is for that not to happen, but sometimes uh, you don't have a choice. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Thank you. Thank you so much for educating me, all of you. I appreciate that. This is awesome. Really quickly on the ground. And mm, do they even decelerate in the air? It doesn't feel like they are. They should be. Oh, we're not calling it. So yeah. we're calling a fly fiction. <laughs> hey, I got that before he did. Yay! I'm becoming a real developer. Delta. Woo! Let's remove the All right. swap to the different movement data in real time. I love game dev Twitch. I can feel it, Palinir. I feel it coming just oozing out of your bones. Oh my gosh. I love it too. Um I, I'm tremendously less productive when I'm on stream. But also, I learn usually a whole lot more. Frisky Biscuit! Hey, there's the new papa! Welcome in! Congratulations over voice for the first time. Oh, man, I'm so glad you're here. I hope everything's going well and you're getting some sleep in. There's some really fun old Flash games that were drastically easier on slower computers. <laughs> Uh, because they didn't track over time. Wow. My bones. <laughs> the best feedback I get for my game is when I stream. There you go. There you go. Babies are sleeping. Rare free time. All right, man. You take the most advantage of that. I'm honored you spent a small fraction of that time in here with me. Uh, best of luck. Also hilarious. My wife just got uh, timed out by Automod for sex-based terms. I'm going to approve the message. Uh... <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to show everyone what the message was. There we go. That was the message she sent. That got her a timeout. <laughs> oh, shoot. That's funny. Automod has no chill. <laughs> uh, it even happens on some modern games like GTA 5. It can crash in certain places with too high of an FPS. Wow, that's crazy. Hey, LC on YouTube, welcome in. We are learning Godot uh, in anticipation of the game jam coming up in uh, just a couple of days. So I'm rebuilding a, this game, Rescue, that I've been building in Game Maker. I'm rebuilding it in Godot and having a great time and learning from everyone. So welcome on in, Hale. Good to see ya. Um, Hawakalale, hello, welcome in. Good to see you. Render Goblin, hi, solo game dev here with a game in early access. Congratulations, how are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Uh, render, I'd love it if you shared here. So so for all of you who are new here today, we're streaming at a different time than we normally do. Normally we don't do Saturdays because I have a family. But uh, we're doing this as a celebration to uh, kick off the Game Jam starting on Monday. By the way, you can sign up for the Game Jam. It's a very skill-based Game Jam, uh, skill development-based. Uh, we're going to have uh, optional critique sessions. The theme is going to be based around a human-computer interaction design principle. Um, we've got lots of different categories. We've got a sponsor in River Wolf Games. Thank you, River Wolf Games. Um, got five different categories with uh, monetary prizes to win, uh, with different types of judging criteria. It's going to be a great time. You're all welcome to join join in. Um, but uh, in the meantime, yeah, we are we're a charitable organization devoted to helping people develop the skill sets they need to enter the video game industry. So this game jam is one of the big things that we're doing here right now. And uh, that's starting on Monday. So, uh, boy, I, I, sometimes I talk so much I forget where I'm going. But th that's the basic idea. Welcome on in, everyone. Already in that small clip looks better than in Game Maker. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. It. It. It is. Um, it's feeling a lot better. It's feeling way better. <laughs> I've learned my lesson not to do like physics or collisions in Game Maker. Like, don't don't do that. Build build other things in Game Maker. Uh, good to see you. You as well, Hale. Uh, oh, right. I was, I was saying that. Okay. The reason I was saying that, uh, Goblin was because, uh, I really love staying up to date on what everyone is building. I have a spreadsheet with everyone's projects on them because I deeply care, but my memory sucks. So if you'd like to share, I would love to, uh, uh, check it out. Feel free to share the steam link and I'd love to, I'd love to put it in my spreadsheet so I can remember. Um, I would highly recommend Godot says Falonir. Yeah. Nice. One day I'll actually do a jam. There you go. How am I? I'm doing very well, Hawakalele. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm doing frabjous, Kalukale. Yeah, it's been a great time. A special Saturday stream with a good crowd. Hail, Ariel is uh, too close to me and was staring at me weird. <laughs> there you go. 
Render Goblin, I made my game available in early access two years ago. Wow. Way too early. Like barely a tech demo when I went live. Building the engine and game because Marco was a little upset with certain engines. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't even know what you could be referring to. I'm in Godot just because I think it's a funny word that I can say however I want. <laughs> uh, link my Steam page? Awesome. Very excited for it. Risky Biscuit, if you only hadn't chosen the time right after having a new baby, I would have probably jumped into the ham. <laughs> I want a ham jam. But even getting back to streaming a day or two this week seems dream. I, I get that. I, I totally get that. Uh... In any case, uh, best of luck, man. We're rooting for you. Let us know any way we can help out. Um, making your own engine. That's right. We've got a couple of people making their own engine. We've got people making their own game engines. We've got people making their own uh, pixel sprite uh, apps and everything. Uh, so it's 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 pretty common uh, around here that uh, I've been seeing. So that's super cool. Uh, I think Ariel is an alien. I can't confirm or deny that. Okay. So let's let, hold on. Let's check. Let's check out uh, Medusa Frontier here. Uh, throw the noise on. A seven and a half minute trailer. Oh man, we're we're diving straight into options menus. Is this Total Biscuit from 2016? My goodness. All right. So fleet has arrived at Medusa 2537. Resources are depleted, and the admiral has seized power to force colonization. It's always the admiral or the vizier, isn't it? It's one of those two. You never have an admiral or a vizier on your team. Settlement is inevitable, and survival is the only agenda. So you have joined the first wave. Well, that was a weird screen. First wave of settlers and prospectors. Welcome to Medusa Frontier. Okay, so it's a 3D survival sci-fi crafting sandbox game. Okay, very cool. This is awesome. Uh, and you've already got five reviews. That's great. Very, very cool. Ain't nothing like what most of us play. It's different, and that's great. Re it was released, released a little bit early. <laughs> got potential, that's for sure. Very, very cool. This is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. The main, re the main reason I'm doing custom engine is because I want actual planet size terrain. So are you doing that through like shaders or something? Like how are you getting that much scale? Okay, now I'm currently refactoring and cleaning up my Kotlin engine. Yes, yeah, there you go. Like really, really early. <laughs> I'm looking forward to actually being able to get reviews. I hear you, Fallon, here. Uh, Jack Codes is the king of us little men. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This is cool. Thank you so much for sharing. So what was the most recent update? Uh, oh, just a few days ago. You've been posting a lot of updates. 22nd, 25th, 14th? You are hard at work, my friend. Engine revisions needed to reorganize overall design and base building features. World scale is being reverted back to a player view of 2.0 world units and standard base wall size of 4x4 world units. I don't know what that means, but it sounds cool. Egg-shaped resource boulders return for seasonal theme. <laughs> You're doing good for you for doing seasonal content in early, early, early access. That's amazing. Man, that's impressive. This is 20 steps further than I have ever made it. So congratulations to you, Render Goblin. I can't wait to see how this continues to develop. Thank you so much for sharing. Very, very cool. I need to I need to add this to my my spreadsheet. Hold on, uh, Medusa Frontier, and Render Goblin, in your own custom built engine. Uh, custom built. Last update today. Nice. Uh, is that the only place to follow it on Steam? Do you like stream or or do YouTube devlogs or anything or or, or Twitter or anything? Um. And then it's a, 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 a space survival crafting, um, a planet scale insanity. Oh no, there's ads in the stream is not, oh no, oh no, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Hold on, there we go. We, we do pause during ads and I totally missed this one, I apologize. We'll be right back. <laughs>
All right, that was a that was a quick little break because I'm I'm bad and and and, and missed it. Uh, well, <laughs> welcome back in everyone. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, for what it's worth, Satisfactory had seasonal content while being six years into early access or something. <laughs> Okay, uh, mostly just your Steam page. I haven't decided on my stream brand. Well, okay, so if you plan on streaming, I, I followed you. I can't wait to see. What ads? Hey, all there, there are ads on, you, uh, on Twitch. YouTube is, is immune to ads. You've got, you've got the antivirus. The, the antibodies are present on YouTube. Uh, but, but Twitch, um, Bezos demands his, his coin. So, uh, very cool. Okay, nice. Right on. Let's, let's keep moving back into our player and just swap to the faster but we'll do the default movie there we go so the character slows down in the air so what did he do here data in real time let's remove where we swap to the different movement data in real time come back into our player and just swap to the faster oh but we'll do the default movie okay interesting so it was uh given in problems there okay There's the slow jump. There's the slow jump. I do wish I could rebuild um, like F5. I wish that keyboard shortcut worked <laughs> while the game was running. Oh my gosh. Hail, we're your family now. <laughs> oh, Falonir, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, so we actually do do this full time. This uh, I don't stream full time, but I, I run Fox Hollow Games full time, and uh, there's a lot that goes into it. That's not the stream. So, um, like for example, I just lined up yesterday sponsors for our next game jam that we're gonna do uh, in July. So uh, there's a lot going on you don't see, and uh, every dollar uh, spent in support of the channel is another drop of formula in my son's bottle. Uh, this is our primary source of income right now. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here and all the support that you show. So Godot Perf has been impressive to you. The framework looks very interesting. If I wasn't coding my own engine, I probably would have tried Godot. Um, so I, I only have experience in Game Maker, and we're just barely learning Godot. So far, I'm kind of in love with Godot. And I, I knew that was going to be the case when I was working in Game Maker, because I... I I took a, a very beginning like 3D modeling and animation class in college and we animated some stuff in Unity. And even back like when I was in college, you know, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, they had built-in controllers. And it blew my mind that we had to hand code everything in Game Maker. And the moment that I put the controller on the character with other collidable objects around in Godot, it 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 was blissful i lived in mexico for two years you can't drink tap water in mexico it's not clean when i got home to the states the very first thing i did when i got home was run straight to the sink and just guzzle water down and it was euphoric it, it was that sort of a feeling <laughs> um so it you know i'm not deep enough into it yet nor do i have enough experience with other engines to really say yay or nay but in comparison to a lot of things that Game Maker kind of struggles with, I have been feeling really great. It does have some UI struggles, like this whole like triple navigation thing here that like it looks like I'm in the player here, but I'm not. I'm in player.gd. I'm in platform.gd. This tab has like nearly nothing to do with what's down here. I I, I can't I, I still don't understand the, the information architecture, but it is pretty dang cool. Uh, Ariel, welcome back. So many interesting things are going on. Absolutely. Uh, Falonir, I really like Godot. There you go. All right. Cool. There we go. So the character slows down in the air much more slowly than they do on the ground. Okay. This feels pretty good. But now with these different, uh, values, you can easily adjust them. And you can adjust these in real time um, on a specific thing in the editor. Like, let's say I'm playing around and I'm like, you know, this air resistance is too much. Well, let's do something more Come drastic. Here, this jump height is way too high. So we're like, Come over here and we'll say I, I love this. I love that you can live update variables. That's great. Hey. 
can see Why? now they're only jumping. You are having some tummy troubles, if we huh? Close, it's going to um, let's try that. Let's try a different pose. See if that helps. Um, we could reset that change, but that's just going to Technically, it's not that you can't drink water. It's that if you drink, get rid of you for a huge stomach disorder while your body acclimates to the different biome. See, that's the thing. It's not It's not even about acclimating. It's literally unhealthy to drink. Nobody in, in Mexico drinks the water, and it's why there's such a huge um, obesity and diabetes epidemic in Mexico because their primary um, staples in their meals are tortillas, which are very carb-heavy, and then Coca-Cola. Because it's, like, cheaper than water a lot of the times. And you have to buy water from these wandering trucks uh, screaming out of a microphone. Uh, you know, agua, agua, garrafones, garrafones. And, and you have to run out like an ice cream truck and buy your darn water supply for the week. It's not good. As someone making their own engine, I can honestly say most articles and info I've read about Godot's internals and rendering engine is impressive and effective. That's lovely. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, Render. Thank you. Uh, I, it, it's good to hear from me because I, I love it when an open source project is like doing things well. <laughs> That's very exciting for me. Um, I, 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 I do think Godot is probably going to be my go-to uh, engine for a lot of reasons. I do want to learn Unity and Unreal, at least to a certain degree, so that I can swap to them when I need to. But I do think Godot is probably going to be the, um, the starting point for projects, the assumed engine we'll be building in. It's not advisable to drink water here, but not because it has bacteria or anything. It gets chlorinated, but because the pipes are rusted. Ah, oh, bummer. We've had a lot of discussion about rust today. My PC started crashing, so I had to switch to my laptop. No worries, Jack. No worries. Thanks for joining us however you can. Um, what are we even doing right now? We're, 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 we're doing the, the air, air resistance, right? Uh, so that's why that value is set that way. Um, the default. Uh, but that's just going to reset it to this default that we have set in the script. Uh, so that's why that value is set that way. Oh, right. Yeah, being able to adjust numbers on the fly is great. It's not going to be very good for this game because you're kind of always on a timer. Um, and, and if you're not constantly jumping, you get pushed off the screen. But uh, for other games, that's going to be really great. I always drink bottled water and occasionally some soda, but not too much. Well, there you go, Ariel. People drink the water and don't really get sick. There you go. Um the default so that's it i think this feels pretty good for our character for movement yeah falonir exports are freaking awesome this, this is so cool i love exports this is like my favorite tutorial i've ever done exports and resources holy crap this stuff is great and then reduce our jump velocity to negative 250 hail wind in video games for me is annoying if it pushes you I can see that. It, it's it's hard when your um, ability to interact with the game is lessened, right? It's uh, I, I, we, We've talked about a lot of mechanics like that in games when we're playing, and I'm like, please stop stopping me from playing your game. Just, if you're going to make it harder, like, find a way to make me leverage the tools I have available to myself in more clever ways. Don't take things away or make them less useful. I just, oh man, I really hate that. Uh, it's why everyone hates water levels, right? Because all of a sudden your method of interacting with the world is dramatically worsened. In my opinion, there are some very nice architecture decisions in Godot's 3D framework. Okay, I was honestly impressed by some info I found. Nice. I, I would love to ask what you found, I just, I know I'm not going to be able to appreciate any of it, but I will absolutely take it, take you at your word. Uh, resources are amazing. Yes, they are. They're my favorite thing ever. I use it to create skills and attach them to players. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm using it right now to like debug different movement types. So like having our default movement type and then a faster one and a slower so I can really quickly prototype different uh, different variables and dial in feel really quick. And like, I just learned about them 20 minutes ago and they're already my favorite thing I've learned in game development. Character <laughs> falls just a little bit more slowly. Resource.use skill and it doesn't matter what the skill is, it just works. Oh, that is so cool. That that feels good. I I I haven't even worked on any sort of project like that yet, but I can tell that feels really good. <laughs> I 
I don't have this um, selected, it has a little bit of chalkiness. Windows doesn't prioritize it, the window. That feels really good. Okay, cool. All right, let's go uh, build a double jump. I, I may only have another minute or two, but we're going to see if we can build out a double jump in here because that is something that we do want in Rescue. Uh, you can also change values during runtime in Unity, but it's only temporary. It will swap back when you stop running. So sometimes I will hide the program to edit stuff, then realize the program is still running. We'll have to do it all over again. Oh, man, that's such a bummer, Jack. Oh, that's painful. The first Cuban indie game. That's probably not true, right? This does look cool, though. A little, little slow, but I love the art style. Whoa. <laughs> huh. Wow. Hey, you know what? Fair. That looks pretty cool. Not gonna lie. That's a good ad. That was a good trailer. If you're doing a trailer, go look at them. That was a good trailer. Am I reading the Bible? Why is it saying thou? You can, you can use evocative language, Hale. It's storytelling. Verisimilitude. There, I've said it. I, we, we got this verisimilitude quota in for the day. We can end the stream now. <laughs> uh, generally speaking, Godot's framework has some nice organization that can help complicated things, like batching and storing objects in your game world. Okay. Cool. I know it was a joke, Hale. I know. I was joking with you. What time can we start the Game Jam on Monday? When you start streaming or when I wake up at 6 a.m. on Monday, which will still be Sunday for you? Um... I don't think I'm ready to split hairs like that quite yet. I think as soon as it's Monday, your time, 12 a.m., Game Jam unlocks. You can go go start building. That You know, you're going to get, what, like a couple hours heads up on, on other people, and that's because you were in the Discord and you were participating with the community. That's I'm okay giving people a little bit of a leg up. It's not that much. It's not like a 24-hour Game Jam where a couple hours are going to make a big difference. So... When it's Monday for you, you can start building. And thank you for respecting that, uh, for, for not building until then. I, I do appreciate that. That's the sort of attitude that lets us do things like this, where we can have little sneak peeks in the Discord. So, uh, 12 join. Yeah, desist. Isn't it great? We got 12 teams joining in so far, and it ain't even Monday yet. So I'm super excited about it. Very, very excited about it. This is a, a bigger turnout than I was expecting, to be frank. So, <laughs> it's great. What's the Jam Discord? You can find it on uh, the on the Itch page. We've got it linked in there. It's a part of the uh, uh, setup section. There's a link to the Discord server. And I'll just, I'll, I'll just throw it in here. Why not? There you go. Need time to put more hours into trying to disobey every UI rule you've taught so far. <laughs> <laughs> genuinely uh i mean you guys saw me when we did the terrible ui game and everything right i mean i love that sort of stuff it is just it's so cathartic for me <laughs> so if you want to take the te the theme ironically I, I you're gonna be a pretty good shoe in for funniest game category that's for sure uh aubrey hello on youtube welcome in i'll wait until tomorrow and if nobody contacts me to make a team i'll go solo uh, well, Arlo, have you, have you sent out the call? I mean, the Game Jam look for group chat is, uh, empty. Like, who's gonna contact you if they don't know you're looking? Go, go throw out a post, Ariel. I need to learn some UI design skills, that's for sure, says Render Goblin. Yeah, it's, it's a very immature field in, in games. For so long, it's just been, like, the producer or, you know, some poor artist gets put on it. And it really is a different field. It's a different industry. Uh, complete with its own set of um, rules and everything. So, I, you know, it's understandable. Uh, well, thank you, Hale. I appreciate that. Uh, need the theme first. Assist. It's in the Discord. You can go get a sneak peek in the Discord if you join up. 
it's it's in the game jam channel. We put the we put the we put we put, we put the theme in there this morning. Um, I did it in the game jam before you even created the channel. You did? Where? I don't see it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, I do see that now. Copy and paste it into the game jam. Look for group channel. I think that got um consumed today. And I know that uh, other people have been looking for teams in, and I've been looking in other people's discords, and people have been trying to find teams over there. So I just, I think, the the look for group channel was just created a little late, unfortunately. Uh, UI is incredible. I also know nothing about how to do it. Yeah, yeah, for real. Gonna head off my headphones. I take care, Jack. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you're there. You didn't see? We'll go to the game jam channel. Um, is our bot not working? There is a Discord. Oh, but it's not now. Oh, boo. For some reason, my streamer bot just like randomly loses commands. Like they just disappear. And I don't know why. And I have to rebuild them all. Um, gosh, what other commands have broken? Lurk. Lurk broke. Great. Lurk. Rebuild that. And then what else? Uh, Discord, yeah, okay, so now we can fix this. You're that, and you're Lurk, good. Okay, those should, those should work now. This is StreamerBot, streamer.bot. Let's see, is this gonna function? Really? Man. I don't know. I got to figure out streamer bot. For some reason, it, oh, it's it's only it's disconnected from everything. <laughs> All right. There you go. Unable to refresh your Twitch verification. Weird. All right, I'll figure that all out later. Uh let me let me throw uh, we we threw the Discord link in there. If if you need the Discord link again, let me know. Um where's the queen of our kingdom? She's upstairs sewing. Uh streamer bot is breaking into you Sammy. Okay, interesting. I suggest making a permanent invite for the Discord and put it in welcome and rules, so if it breaks again, you can link it. It should be. Uh, it should be in the panels down below in Twitch, and it should be in the channel description on on YouTube. Um, yeah. Your token probably expired. Yeah. That's a spear. Figure that rubbish out later. That's future Joe's problem. He'll have advanced technologies at that point that will render that problem trivial. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, when you go back to uh, the very beginning and do our wall jump. Oh gosh, ads. Google. See, this is this is the YouTube ads. Twitch has their ads. YouTube has their ads. Uh, steals the queen's crown. <laughs> there you go. Oh my goodness. Hey. Hey, uh, you know what? I'm hearing a little gremlin waking up in the next room. That means my time is up. We need to go do some Easter celebrations with family. This has been such a joy. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I have loved hanging out with you all and talking Gado, talking engines. This has been just a fantastic time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to go ahead and raid into JD Does Dev. He's a great guy uh, doing all sorts of cool projects. Um, we're going to go raid into him. And... Uh, with that being said, once again, as a reminder, we're a charitable organization devoted to helping people uh, develop their skill sets and enter the video game industry. If that sounds like a good place for you, welcome home. Follow, subscribe, uh, carpet bomb with money. I don't know. Whatever, whatever you want to do. Whatever support you want to offer um, is great. I uh, appreciate all of you. Thanks for sharing your projects. It's been fantastic. Thank you, Falonir, Render Goblin, Aubrey, Hale, uh, Jack, we had uh, Foolbox in here, Desist Dawdling, um, and, and all the people that I am not mentioning and all the people who are just hanging out and listening, you're all valued, you're all appreciated. Thank you so much. Let's go hang out with JD Does Dev. He's a great guy. We'll have a, hope you have a great Easter weekend.